Hi everyone and welcome to session number six of ISTQB training test automation engineer certification. We have already covered the first module which was about the introduction to test automation and now we are covering the second one which is about the preparation for test automation. In this module we have covered 2.1 and 2.2 and today we will be covering the last topic in this module which is designed for testability and automation. Let's first have a look at what testability means. So it's the degree to which test conditions can be established for a component or system and tests can be performed to determine whether those test conditions have been met. So basically, this is an ability of a system, whether it's testable or not, because if you have some planned test and due to some limitations of the software interface, you are not able to automate um, those tests, which means that you are not able to verify those requirements. So it's limiting you to, um, uh, to test specific features, which means that you'll not be able to uh, cover the testing as planned. So SUT testability should be designed and implemented in parallel with the design and implementation of the other features of the SUT. So over here, they are advising is that while you are um, designing and implementing the other features of the system, it's advisable that in parallel, you also start looking into which areas of the system are testable and which are not. And the ones which are not, is there anything which you can do in order to, um, to make those testable? Like you can automate that. It might be that you have to add uh, maybe any stub driver uh, or maybe um, any any new design capability in it. Maybe you need to add some, uh, make some API call, etc. Whatever it requires in order to make it testable, that needs to be looked into in parallel while the system is being designed and implemented because it's easier to do that at that stage. Okay, so now this can be done by a software architect, but this is often done by or with the involvement of TAE. Why TAE involvement is important? Because test automation engineer would be someone who is working on the test automation for that system. So who is familiar that what kind of features needs to be automated and what would be the approach for automating those features. And in conjunction with software architect, uh, the test automation engineer would be the best person to advise that what kind of uh, capabilities um, is, are required in the system in order to automate specific features. Okay, so design for testability consists of several parts. The first one is observability. SUT needs to provide interfaces that give insight into the system. Okay, so if you have test cases written for a requirement, then you should have an interface through which you can perform testing and verify that if the tests passed uh, or failed. So does the system under test makes it easy or hard? So that's like one part of it. The second one is controllability. SUT needs to provide interfaces that can be used to perform actions on the SUT. So these can be UI elements, uh, function calls, communication elements, for example, USB protocol, etc or it can be any electronic signals, etc. So does the SUT makes it hard or impossible to run few types of tests? So this is the question. Is there any specific tool required for testing? And the third one is defined architecture, an architecture that provides clear and understandable interfaces, giving control and visibility on all test levels. So architecture means that all the layers, components, services, and interfaces, what's the structure to implement test automation? So whenever we talk about the designing for testability, it consists of these three parts. Okay, now let's have a look at um, an example. Okay, so when we are testing any software, what we need to identify a bug? 
a test must be able to reach and trigger the bug because of course if we are not able to reach and trigger that bug then we'll not be able to identify that the system is not working as expected and also it needs to be uh, a test must be able to observe the incorrect result so these are the two things which means that we do require the testability uh, capability and also that we are able to observe the incorrect result and of course these two are not possible unless we have a defined architecture so I hope that now you do understand that uh, why these three parts are really important for the design for testability okay so let's see that we have implemented a feature so uh, this is an interface where we have two numbers, number one is 10, and number two is eight, and the third field is sum, where once you enter number one and number two, it calculates the sum of these two numbers, and it's giving us the correct answer, 18, which is perfectly fine, okay. So, which means that it is fine, but let's see another scenario. Over here, it's number one, we have added again 10 in number two we have added minus 8 this time and again when it calculates the sum it's calculating 18 which is wrong this means that the, the fields are not interpreting the minus sign the negative sign it's treating whatever the number is entered as a positive sign as a positive number and calculating it incorrectly so if we were if we were not able to reach and trigger this bug by giving it an input of negative number then we wouldn't have reached this bug and we wouldn't have observed the incorrect result that's 18 is the incorrect results so that's what we mean by the design for testability and why all these factors are important The test automation engineer considers ways in which the SUT can be tested in an effective testing the right areas and finding critical bugs and efficient without taking too much effort away. So test automation engineer is looking for the ways in which the system can be tested in both effective and efficient manner. Whenever specific software interfaces are needed, they must be specified by the test automation engineer and implemented by the developer. So whenever uh, a test automation engineer is identifying that in order to test these specific features of the system, there are few things which required maybe specific uh, interfaces then that needs to be identified specified by the test automation engineer and then it needs to be implemented by the developer it is important to define testability and if needed additional software interfaces early in the project so that development work can be planned and budgeted exactly so let's say that if something is already developed and when you start testing and then you realize that oh this can't be automated or um, there are some limitations to testing then it means that more work would be required then again it needs to go back to the requirements phase all the requirements needs to be re-evaluated along with the uh, with the capabilities um, designed and um, and what kind of things you require in order to uh, test those new features then it has to be developed again which means that it's just adding more cost and time okay so there are few examples of software interfaces given that actually support testing the first one is the powerful scripting capabilities of modern spreadsheets okay so over here we are talking about all these software interfaces because we just said that in order to make uh, a system testable if there are any software interfaces required then yes we need to develop them uh, earlier in the project state. So these are the few examples given in the syllabus. The first one is the scripting capability. So when we 
see the spreadsheets, the Excel spreadsheets, then uh, we know that there are some built-in formulas which are given. There are some scripting capabilities given in the spreadsheets, which makes it very easy to perform lots of functions within the spreadsheet. And then those functionalities can can be used when you are maybe using uh, that data for uh, you are importing or exporting that data uh, for your test automation. The second one is applying stubs or mocks to simulate software and or hardware that is not yet available or is too expensive to buy. Allows testing of the uh, software in the absence of that specific interface. So if you, we know that uh, if any software or hardware is not yet available or it is expensive to buy in order to perform a specific testing, then stubs or mocks are a very good way to simulate that functionality and we can use that uh, for our testing. The third one is software interfaces or stubs and drivers can be used to test error conditions. For example, uh, let's say that consider there is a device with an internal hard disk drive. So now the software which is controlling this hard disk drive, which can be a driver, should be tested for failures of that hard disk drive. So doing this by waiting for a hard disk drive to fail is not efficient at all. So that's why what we can do that we can instead implement software interfaces that simulate the defective behavior of that uh, hard disk drive and we can verify that uh, the driver software performs performs correctly or not like for example whether it provides error messages or not or if there is a failure whether it retries or not so that's why software interface can be um, a good idea to use instead number four is alternative software interfaces can be used to test an system under test when no UI is available yet. Okay, so embedded software in technical systems often needs to monitor the temperature in the device and trigger a cooling function to start when the temperature rises above a certain level. Okay, so now this can be tested with this specific hardware which is mentioned but instead what we can use uh, we can do that we can uh, come up with a software interface which actually have the capability uh, to specify the temperature so which means that in that case we we don't need that soft uh, uh, that hardware and the fifth one is state transition testing is used to evaluate the state behavior of the SUT. We already know that. A way to check whether the SUT is in the correct state is by curing it by a customized software interface designed for this purpose. Right, so if we have to evaluate the behavior of a system uh, uh, using state transition testing uh, in on different states, then we can come up with a customized uh, software interface which can actually evaluate uh, that what, what's the behavior of the system in different states and that can be used for state transition testing. Design for automation should consider that capable, uh, compatibility with existing test tools should be established early on. Okay, so if you are, uh, let's say that there are some test tools which you are already using in your organization, and then you have started working on automation, and while you are doing the design for automation, you should always uh, look if the design for the automation of any new project or um, any new feature is compatible with the existing tools or not because of course you don't want that uh, you are coming up with an automation solution which is not compatible which can't be used in conjunction to the existing test tools 
The second one is the issue of test tool compatibility is critical in that it may impact the ability to automate test of important functionality. So if you're using a test tool, uh, test tool already, then the compatibility for that test tool is really, really important because it might limit to um, to the amount of testing you want to do because maybe you are not able to automate test of some um, some important functionality if if there is a problem with the test tool compatibility and the third one is solutions may require development of program code and calls to apis okay so in order to expand uh, the testability, uh, the design for automations, you might need to add some more uh, code in the development, like you have to develop some code or maybe uh, you need to work with developers to add a capability in order to test those features. It can be uh, making some calls to APIs, etc. as well, which means that you need to make some changes, which is, uh, which needs to be considered. But along with that, as we also covered earlier, the levels of intrusion, that needs to be taken care of as well. Because of course, we don't want that we change so much in the system that uh, then we are not getting the correct results when we are doing automation testing. I hope you have found this uh, module useful and uh, with this session we have covered this uh, module so in next section we will be doing some uh, some practice questions for module one and two and then we will continue to module three so i'll see you in the next session then till then take care